I'm not afraid to 
four, three, two, one, let's go! Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag hier. Welcome to the stream. I got something prepared for you, which you are going to like and love. But before we get started, of course, I want to make sure that the system is running so I can focus on the stream. You know how we do it. Always double checking stuff. Yes, it looks good. And yeah, I think I look good. I hope I do. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I got something for you. And why not just dive right into it? So today we have something special for you. So let's get started. Today, I want to talk about how you can achieve the what the hell effect as it pertains to kettlebell training. Now, in order to achieve this, we have to do three things. Number one, you have to know what it is. Number two, you have to know what to do. And number three, you have to know how to continue once you have number one and number two down path. And number four, we're going to have a small Q&A at the end. If, excuse me, if you have any questions. So you can throw them right now in the live chat or when the question pops up, you type it in the live chat and at the end, I'll see what's up. So what is the what the hell effect as it pertains to kettlebell training? Now, let me be clear. I don't like this description, what the hell? Because it implies that there is a surprise. We are surprised, what the hell just happened? And I do understand that back in the days when Pavel came up with this term, that it wasn't widely experienced for that matter. But now we have progressed. Now we are in a different era. We have realized and experienced how powerful the kettlebell can be. So now to me, this isn't a surprise anymore, but it is a plain fact. That is the reason why I call it the kettlebell effect. But the kettlebell and the what the hell effect are both synonymous. This is just the way I want to describe it. Now the kettlebell effect is a byproduct of proper and regular kettlebell training. And let me stop right there. What do I mean with proper kettlebell training? I mean mostly ballistic exercises such as the swing, the clean, the snatch, or the jerk. Exercises that involve momentum. This of course does not imply that a deadlift or a press or a squat is wrong or not good. It just implies that we're focusing on the ballistics because I believe this is where the kettlebell effect comes from. Now let's focus on the regular. On the thumbnail you see that it says in 30 days you can look like a beast, right? Well, of course. It's not directly that you'll build explosive muscle. I'm enticing you a little bit, but I think that you can most definitely build quality and aesthetic muscle in 30 days if you are just starting out. These are so-called newbie gains, but what I want to focus on is you have to be a regular. It's not just 14 days, 7 days, 30 days. I believe this effect on this phenomenon will crystallize itself after longer periods of time. And what I want to include and one of the missions why I do this stuff and why I believe in just training and movement in general is because there's so many benefits that are attached to it. And of course, one thing that I want to make very clear is what I'm trying to sell you and what I'm trying to share with you and what I want to give you is training that you will do until you are six feet under. That's why I consider it a regular type of activity, not just something that I do for a couple of months or days or whatever have you, and then I stop and then I can lavish and profit from this effect because it now just stays. So the result of this phenomenon, this byproduct of proper and regular kettlebell training, entails two possible scenarios. Number one, it equips you, 
the practitioner with a newly acquired skill that you didn't even train for. Number two, or number one, right? That's number one. Maybe I said number two. Number two, it enables the practitioner, you, to surpass previous achievements and metrics of human performance. Now, what does this mean in a practical example? It equips you with a skill you didn't train for. For example, you now can do an exercise you weren't able to do before, such as a pistol squat. That happened to me. And right now, I'm able to do pistol squats or one-legged squats fairly effortlessly without ever having trained for it. And I remember in my bodybuilding type training days, I couldn't do it. And now it is fairly effortlessly. Another skill is my rowing skill went through the roof. I don't even train for it. But now I'm able to water row for two minutes straight and reach 408 meters in two minutes, which I consider an achievement. And now this is where it's, what it seeps into if we talk about number two. It enables you to surpass previous achievements and metrics of human performance. And that is maybe your deadlift went up. We've heard this a lot. Now I'm able to lift more. Maybe your running speed increased. You used to be the tail light in your group and now you're running front and center or even in the pole position. So these are examples of the kettlebell effect. But why is that? This is the biggest question, right? Because if we want to understand something and that's what these videos and my content is for, because I just, I don't, just want to show you stuff. Or well, sometimes I do just show you stuff and then you follow the orders, right, from your coach. But sometimes we want to dig our heels in and understand the workings behind the curtain. Here's the answer. I think it lies in the ballistic element of kettlebell training. Like I mentioned, ballistics are exercises that incorporate a swing, a clean, a snatch, jerk, right, momentum. And these four just come to mind, swing, clean, snatch, jerk, explosive element, and momentum. We move the weight ballistically on a continuous basis. So now, and this is very important, I want to make this clear. What now follows, what I'm going to present to you, is my personal theory based upon the findings of Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky, which is a Russian sports scientist. I've read two of his books, which are not easy to read and matter of fact I want to add that I believe this has also to do with semantics because it was translated from Russian into English and there are maybe some barriers that the translator didn't really understand and therefore it makes it a, little, a bit harder to read so I tried my best to distill Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky's information into language that is easy understandable not just for you also for me and that's why I'm saying these are, this is my personal theory. And what I want to make very clear is that I'm looking forward to people challenging my personal theory, not because I want to stand here and say, oh, I'm withstanding all that onslaught, but I want to test it. And in order to test the theory, people have to comment. So if you have any insights, if you are a biomechanics, biomechanist, if you are a sports coach, if whatever have you, whatever type of background, and you want to add something to this discussion, please do, because this is a theory that I'm throwing out, and I believe this is how a science is supposed to work. We throw something out there because we have data, we worked on it, and then feedback comes back, and then we can improve. So if my theory withstands the onslaught of critique, then we can say, hey, we're, we have come an inch closer to the truth. And just for you to understand, Yuri Verkhoshansky pioneered plyometric training, right? Explosive stuff. Fascinating. And there's a fun fact that I want to mention, which I am incredibly, incredibly proud of. And that is, through my research, I got into contact with Dr. Michael Yeses, who worked alongside Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky, because... Or as I'm concerned, Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky passed away. And Dr. Michael Yeses worked alongside him. And I was able to 
Get It podcast session with Dr. Michael Yeses, which I'm highly looking forward to. And I'm going to ask him all that question. I'm going to show him this theory that I'm having because he, as you can see, he, he's a legend in the field. So when I realized it, I was like, ooh, I'm a little bit starstruck. So Michael Yeses is a teacher, sports performance trainer, biomechanics, and author, and a heavyweight. He's 90 years of age, so he's going to share his knowledge with me and then with you, of course. So I'm looking forward to this podcast discussion. So now let's jump back to what Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky says in his books. He says, now I'm quoting him, but mind you, I have diluted that stuff into a language that I believe is easier to understand for me, so I hope I didn't make any mistakes in here. So listen, Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky says, we can divide resistance exercises into two groups. We have group number one, exercises in which the working force is developed after preliminary Muscular tension. This sounds very fancy, but it's easy. Imagine a heavy deadlift with a barbell. You have the barbell set in front of you. You have 200 kgs on it. You are about to test your PR, your personal record. So what do you do? You grab the barbell and you build tension. You get ready to lift. This is what we call preliminary muscular tension. And on a side note, I got this great analogy from my brother Alex, the Hebrew hammer. He said, imagine when it, when it comes to tension, because why do we need it? Because we don't want to fold our spine in half with a heavy deadlift. And he says, a fascinating quote, he says, imagine a spaghetti. If a spaghetti is cooked, it is, there's no tension. It wobbles around, right? But if a spaghetti is not cooked, then it is tight. And if you aim at a, um, at a block, at a heavy block, at a cylinder block, for example, a concrete block, and you push at the right angle, you can move that concrete block with such a thin piece of matter because there is tension. So that's why we have to build tension to work a heavy deadlift. I hope you follow me, follow what I'm saying, and I hope this makes, makes sense. So that's group number one. Let's jump into group number two. These are exercises, listen closely, in which the working force is developed from zero or from the inertia of a falling object. Now imagine a kettlebell swing or even better, a kettlebell snatch, right? We pull the kettlebell between our legs into the backswing. Then we hip thrust the kettlebell forward. The kettlebell starts flying. I pull it overhead approximately at shoulder level and then I fixate the kettlebell in the so-called top fixation. Now when I drop it, I let gravity do its thing. And what happens? I am not building preliminary tension. I wait for the arm to reconnect with my body. And as soon as the arm makes contact with the body, my muscles have to react from zero. So the working force is developed from zero. These are different types of exercises. So keep this in mind. We have the heavy deadlift exercises that use preliminary tension. And then we have exercises where the working force is zero, where I have to overcome the inertia of an object. Now, important stuff, and I want to read this very slowly because I even have to wrap my head around this. The main difference between these groups of exercises, picture in your mind, we have the heavy deadlift on one side, we have the snatch on the other side. The main difference between these two is that the first group, the heavy deadlift group, does not provoke an appreciable influence on the so-called muscle excitation tension link. I'm quoting Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky here. These are not my words because I'm not as bright as this gentleman was. So, what does he say? He does not say, that's important, he does not say that it doesn't provoke any influence at all. He says it doesn't provoke an appreciable influence in this excitation tension link, the heavy deadlift. And now here I go, maybe you have heard of the sliding filament theory, and I don't wanna to dive too much into theory, but I want you to understand it. So, if there's nothing happening and your muscles are relaxed, right, there's a relaxation going on, right? No tension. But as soon as an action potential arrives, okay, it comes from your brain, so I want to move that muscle, then there's excitation happening. Boom, right? So the muscles act. 
So Dr. Yuri Van Khoshansky says, this excitation, it does happen, yeah, most definitely when you do a heavy deadlift, but it's not, the influence is not as appreciable. Now, why is that? Consequently, depending upon the amount of weight or the training modality used, conditions in the first group, which is the heavy deadlift, think about the heavy deadlift, are created chiefly for the development of muscular strength. And I think we can all agree on this, right? A heavy deadlift will build strength. You will get stronger with a heavy deadlift, a heavy squat, a heavy bench, and this is awesome. Do not conflate or do not think that I'm saying one group is better than the other. They're both awesome. We need strength. But here it comes. The deadlift does not develop the speed with which the muscles switch from the non-active to the active state. Remember this, it builds strength, but it doesn't build the frequency or the, the speed with which muscles switch from the relaxation period to the tension period. And now let's consider the four tenets of strength because you want to understand this and on a deeper level. There's four tenets of strength that we understand and that I understand as far as I read that stuff. And please understand, I'm scratching the surface. I'm not going deep into this because I don't have the knowledge to go too deep into this. I just have a surface understanding. But I think the surface understanding is enough to understand why the kettlebell has such a powerful potential. So we have force, work, power, and endurance. Four types or four tenets of strength. Let's go through them one by one. We have, for example, force is mass times acceleration, or how much energy can you put into an object? How much can I squeeze that thing, right? This is force. Work is force times distance. So in other words, how far can I effectively move that object? It's not just how much energy can I put into it, but how much energy can I put into this object and move it? Now we have to understand power. Power is work. Remember work, right? Work is how far can I move something? Divide it by time. So that means how much energy can I squeeze into a given unit of time or into the shortest amount possible, in the shortest time window possible. I'm gonna give you some clear examples. It's, it's a little bit dry, but it makes sense in a second. And then we have the final tenet of strength, which is endurance. The ability to apply maximal average speed of cyclical locomotion. In other words, overcoming a lower amount of work as efficient as possible for longer periods of time. So we, we understand these four. Now let's focus on power. Remember again, power is work divided by time. How much energy can I squeeze into a short window? So I have a time frame of one second. How much energy can I squeeze into that one second? For example, a power snatch, right? You have these 200 kilograms on the barbell on the floor. Now you want to bring this monster overhead. This is power. You have to act quickly. Nobody's doing a power snatch like this. Uh, because the weight is going to crush you. You have to be quick, explosive, fast. This is power. So now let's stay on power. Now. The conditions of the muscular work in the first group, the heavy deadlift, remember the heavy deadlift, have the potential to develop muscular strength. We know this, right? So a heavy deadlift builds strength. Yes, we got this. This is the first group. Now the conditions of the muscular work in the second group, what does this build? Dynamic strength, speed of movement, and chiefly starting strength. And what is starting strength? It is simple. Instantaneous development of muscular tension, quick and fast. Listen, is due to the extra mobilization of latent motor resources. 
Stuff that is, resources that are laying around have to be recruited if you are acting fast and quickly. This develops starting strength. And what is starting strength? Explosiveness. Power. Being able to react quickly. And these are exercises from the second group. The snatch, the jerk, the swing, the clean. Where movement is involved, where ballistics are involved. Just like a heavy power snatch with, with a barbell is also a ballistic element, a ballistic maneuver. So you got this, right? We have exercises number one in the first group, building strength. Exercises in the second group, building explosiveness. And this is still Dr. Yuri Verkoshansky. He says this stuff. So consequently, if we, have, if we have conditions where strength resists the weight of a load, you build, you build strength. You are resisting the weight of the load, the heavy deadlift, right? So uh, you pull it up, right? Because the load is the weight, so you pull it up. You have to resist it. It's the strength component. But on the other hand, when strength is directed against the load's force of inertia, the kettlebell, as it drops between your legs, this stimulates the speed of muscular contraction, your power. This stimulates power. And I think a jerk is a great example of quick and fast power development. And I felt my power go up in my jerk because now I'm working with double 24s, right? Boom, this exercise. And I remember how the double 24s were destroying me. And I don't think it was because I'm not strong enough, but because I wasn't powerful enough. Because as you bring the kettlebell overhead, you hip thrust the weight up, you have to be as quick as possible. And when you drop in the second dip, you have to be as quick as possible to catch the weight. This is power development. So here is the essence, because we're still talking about the kettlebell effect, right? Ballistic kettlebell exercises, now this is my opinion now, my theory, belong into the second group of exercises, according to Yuri Verkhoshansky, where strength is directed against the load's force of inertia. This stimulates power development. I just showed you a, a, a or a, taught you or I explained a principle or an example of the double jerk. And think about this. You're able to develop the speed at which a muscle is able to turn on. And I'm going to give you a real life example about this. And I see this with our clients in the gym. When I say tension, quick, fast. It takes them a couple of milliseconds until they are able to tense their bodies. Why? Because their latent motor resources haven't been fully recruited yet. So the brain is still connecting the dots. Fascinating stuff. And now, why are we experiencing the kettlebell effect? And here is the point. Listen closely. Most people who work out, and I'm not talking about the kettlebell community, I'm not talking about you and me, I'm talking about most people who work out on this planet Earth, which is what, 1% or one, even smaller than 1%, right? 99% of people do not really train on a regular basis, and those that do, that's not us. We are a small minority. We are a niche. Most people go to the gym, right? So what do they engage in? A chest press, a row, a lat pull, a leg press, and God forbid some free weight exercises. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, right? And you probably made this experience, right? You have the leg press, the leg curl, the leg extension, the, the row, then you rotate, the chest press, and then at the end, the crunch, and then that's it. So what are you doing? You resist the weight of the load all the time in a typical gym setting. So you are engaging in the first group of exercises. Isn't that fascinating? That's what most people engage in, into the first group of exercises. Now, if we only engage into one realm, what happens? What is the logical conclusion? It leaves the realm of power development untouched. 
Because you always do the first group of exercises and you never engage into any ballistic exercises at all. Because why? Well, we can talk about the why for a second. Because they're advanced and you need a coach to show you how to do stuff. That's not, that's not something that traditional gym chains have, uh, are strong in. And here it comes. As people start developing this lost realm of human performance through ballistic kettlebell exercises, they experience a new superpower. And this is the quintessential definition of the kettlebell effect. Easy. The reason why this effect is there is because it is potential that you have never touched. This potential was always there, but the kettlebell open up this can of worms, Pandora's box, of really developing this type of new superpower. And yes, we can talk about athletes. Well, athletes do that all the time. Yes, but most people are not athletes. And that's why you see, I see this all the time in the gym, and I see it all from you guys on, on the YouTube, on Insta, on everywhere, that wow, my stuff, I can do stuff I wasn't able to do before. I'm now able to run in, 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 the, in the primary, in, in, the, in the pole position with my group because you have now unlocked a new potential of human development. That is the kettlebell effect. And let's take a deep dive even further into Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky. He based his findings, the stuff that I'm sharing with you right now, which I have to admit and I have to say this, I'm just touching his findings on an incredibly superficial basis. He developed a method out of his findings that he calls the shock method. And the shock method includes plyometric exercises such as depth jumps. And research from other coaches such as Pavel, as well as countless anecdotal evidence, provides me enough evidence to believe that the kettlebell has a similar if not even better effect on the body than depth jumps. Because jumping, as we all know, is something that isn't easy. You might be thinking, well, that's easy. No, it's not. It's not. People really have to understand how to jump, especially doing depth jumps, where you jump from a higher entity or from a higher distance down, catch the weight, and then jump back again. This is, this is big stuff. I'd rather have you do a hand-to-hand -hand swing. Way less effects on the joints, way less problems, easier to learn, and you probably get the same potential out of it. I would have loved to see how Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky was, was conducting his research based upon the kettlebell. And that's why I'm looking so forward to talking to Dr. Michael Yeses, because I'm gonna ask him all these questions. And now here's a real world example of the kettlebell effect. Now, we have a lot of real world examples like, hey, I was able to deadlift more stuff. I was able to run faster. Now I'm able to walk without breathing, uh, <laughs> without getting out of breath and stuff. And these are all real world examples. I'm not trying to diminish the importance of, of these aspects and facets of real world examples. But there's one thing where I have seen or where I think I'm connecting the dots of power development. Now, a good friend of Angie broke her wrist because of her dog. Just giving you this little anecdote, this little story right here. How did this happen? She was walking with her dog. She also, have a, she also has a English Staffordshire Bull Terrier, like Gypsy, and his name is Chapo. <laughs> so what happened? She was walking with Chapo, her little Staffy, and they were, I think, he saw another dog on the other side, and she was walking with him, and they, they were, I think, got in close contact or whatever. So she kept walking, and all of a sudden, Chapo, the little Staffy, pulls on the leash with so much velocity and aggression that it broke her wrist. And one thing that you have to understand about Staffies is our boy Gypsy, he's 22 kg weight. That's a lot of weight on a small frame, a lot of dog on a small frame. He's very close to the ground, so he's very aerodynamic, and if he digs himself into the ground, you have a hard time picking the boy up or directing him. So I do understand where his power comes from, from the little boy. But my Steffi, Gypsy, 
will never be able to accomplish this in my case. Why? Because my reactive ability and power development to switch my muscles from the non-active to the active state, if he pulls and I'm able to pop, catch him, is properly developed. That's a real world example. And I had a conversation with Angie about this. I was like, he's not able to do this with me because first of all, I'm most of the time focused, but even if he goes quick, I'm able to go quick as well. Doesn't mean that I'm not maybe injuring or spraining my muscle, but I'm not breaking something because my muscles are able to react quickly. And of course, in an emergency, it might be that the muscle takes some damage as a, and if, in the fallout. And that led me to believe that the kettlebell effect is fall prevention. So not only does the kettlebell build muscle, it's soft on the joints, it's great for your cardiovascular health. Not only do you have an own gym, not only is it simple and easy to understand, not only doesn't it require a lot, a lot of space, it also builds your health in a way where you can say, listen, grandpa, if you pick up the kettlebell and you keep working with it, this is probably the best way to prevent you from falling. Because what happens if you trip? If you trip, your muscles have to react quickly and fast. And if your power isn't developed properly, you will fall and you will hurt yourself. So this concludes the theoretical part. So now what we're going to do is I want to show you, you now just learned why the kettlebell effect is so powerful. But now I want to show you how to engage in the effect most definitely. So we're now going to do some exercises. I have the heart style swing single handed. I'm going to show this to you. And you might as well want to now grab your kettlebell, make sure that you can still see me, make sure nothing is in close proximity because I want you to follow me. Then we're going to jump into the snatch, and then the last exercise will be the jerk. But if you, before we jump into this, I want you to do the following. Because this is so important, guys. If I have been able to serve you any value right now, please make sure to do this. Strabo, my name is of no importance to you. Just know this. I sponsored today's video of Liebestag. In the back, you see my friend Igor. We are both hunting for good kettlebell channels. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Liebestark YouTube channel. Or else, comrade, we can't consider you to be a true student of the art of kettlebell training. So please go ahead, ladies and gentlemen, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. Now, let's switch the system. And of course, I always want to make sure, I've double checked it before, but there's something that I've learned along the way of live streaming, and that is never trust the system to do its job properly. You always have to double check. So we are right here. I have the kettlebell in front of me. I'm gonna close this door right now. I'm gonna keep talking to you guys because yes, Everything is working properly, so this is awesome. So now, let's cover the heart style swing first, or as I like to call it, is the high tension swing, all right? So we want to develop a lot of tension because we just talked about power development. So now I'm gonna show you one of the best exercises to build power, and that is the single-handed heart style swing. Now, I only have a 16 kg right here. Normally, I would use heavier weights, but now I'm not warmed up, and I don't wanna um, uh, hurt myself or anything, so that's the reason why I'm showing it to you with a 16 kg. So let me demonstrate first, watch. Single-handed heart style swing. Now what happens? Let's just refocus our perspective on calling it a high tension swing. You need to develop a lot of tension to do this swing. So, you stand shoulder width apart. The kettlebell is approximately half a meter in front of you. One thing that we have to learn right now is the hinge. So try to follow me. You push your hips back, your upper body leans forward, and your knees are unlocking. They are not bending, they are unlocking. 
And a, I have two great examples for this. Basketball players do this all the time. This is a hinge. And the second uh, uh, factor that can help you to understand what a hinge is, imagine my back becomes a table. So if I put something on the table, it has to stay there, right? So if it looks like this, the stuff will drop off the table. So think about your back is a table. So try to follow me now. I'm pushing my hips back, upper body leans forward. I'm extending my arms on the sides of my body. And now, coming back up. Pushing those hips back, upper body comes forward. If you do it properly, you should feel some tension here in your real legs, coming up. Very important to do. Now, as we pull the kettlebell into the backswing, we wait until the arm makes contact with the body. As soon as the kettlebell makes contact with the body, we hip thrust the kettlebell forward. And now here is where the true power development lies and another important aspect as to why I see some people have trouble with creating tension. Because most beginners do this mistake, watch this. I'm doing it without a kettlebell. They pull it into the backswing and then they go, whew. Either they're not able to build enough tension or here it comes, they're not able to activate the brakes. If there is tension and velocity coming from the rear, what happens if I'm reaching full extension? I'm moving in time and space, so I need something to break the mechanism in order for me to not overdo it. So I have to boom, contract my midsection, abdominals, quads. So as I'm pushing the kettlebell forward, boom, there's tension. The kettlebell travels, and I'm keeping a firm grip with the high tension heart style swing. I don't want to let it loose. I keep a firm grip. So I wait for the gravity to do its thing. As soon as the kettlebell reaches its apex, the kettlebell wants to drop again. And on a side note, you can also do overspeed eccentrics where you pull the kettlebell back into the backswing, an advanced technique. So I wait. In our case, we wait, the kettlebell drops, and I wait until it reconnects with my body. And then I'm hinging, and I have to bend my knees to a certain extent. It's like a very strong deadlift position, boom, coming back up, down, boom, coming back up. And one of my early mistakes was my posture. And again, I want to quote Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky. He says, if our posture isn't proper, we lose strength up to a very high degree or a high percentage. So what do I mean with wrong posture? Especially your spine. Your spine has to be locked once it reaches, once you reach full extension. So if I reach full extension, I don't want this. This is what I did, right? The chicken neck. I was like, that's tension. <laughs> until, until I realized, no, 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 no. Keeping a locked spine means from the neck to my upper back, down to my hips, the spine is locked. Okay? So let's try a couple of reps. Don't use full tension right now. You just want to get the movement going. And we use our left hand. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Park the bell. Another thing that you probably saw was I am pulling the bell a little bit towards me so that the bottom of the bell is off the floor and the belly of the bell touches the floor so that the handle points towards me. So this is the heart style or single handed swing. Now what it takes is immense time and dedication and practice to understand this exercise. And do not think for a second, just because you have now tried it for the first time, that this means that your heart style swing will be perfected after 30 days. Matter of fact, any type of exercise can always be perfected. That's why I'm such a big believer in, in the basics. And an important aspect is, if you want the kettlebell effect to take place, Remember what I said, regular training, that's one thing, but here it comes, proper training. Treating the kettlebell the way it's supposed to be treated. And I believe 
you have the most bang for your buck when you pick it up for ballistic exercises because the kettlebell dominates the ballistic space. So now, let's jump into the snatch. So we have just covered the single hand hard style swing, right? Now let's cover the snatch. With the snatch, I like to take a different approach. I call it the hybrid version, where I still use tension, but I also want to move a little bit more efficient, efficiently. And now here is the magic that is happening once the kettlebell is overhead. Remember when I told you that the second group of exercises has to work against the uh, inertia of a load, right? And it has to react from zero. It has to build reactive ability. It happens in the swing, but it happens even, even more, that's my personal opinion, as I'm increasing the distance that the kettlebell has to travel. So in this trajectory, there is the arc is way bigger than if I have it up here, right? So a bigger arc means there is a higher impact that my muscles have to compensate for. So let's check out the snatch. It's the same element. We start in the same element. The triangle, the kettlebell's a little bit in front of me. I'm pulling it into the backswing. Now, hip thrusting the weight forward, right? The hip thrust. And think about activating your brakes, boom, and the kettlebell starts flying. As it starts flying, approximately on this level, on shoulder level, there is some pulling going on. Because I have to pull the kettlebell up in order to fixate it in the top fixation. This is called the top fixation, where you're arms are extended and biceps close to the ear. So in order to achieve this, I have to do two things. I have to pull it up, have a loose grip, insert my full wrist and part of my forearm inside the window. Just for you to understand, this here is the kettlebell window. This is where I have to insert my full wrist, really go deep. We talked about this channel, uh, about this on the channel a couple of times. And then once it's in the top fixation, here come the brakes again. Now, if I don't stop the velocity as the kettlebell travels up, what happens? You. Or it starts wobbling around. So once the kettlebell's up, I have to spear it and break the velocity that is coming from below. So once I stop it, here's an important mechanism. We call it the corkscrew. Now the kettlebell sits approximately on this side, right? Once the kettlebell's overhead, this is where the kettlebell now rests, approximately here. Now if I just turn my palm towards me, the kettlebell drops immediately. So as the kettlebell drops, this is where I realize that gravity is still existent. <laughs> it comes back, so I let gravity do its thing. I let it drop, and then I wait for the kettlebell to reconnect with my body. I hinge, and then I go back up. So let me demonstrate, and what I'm going to show you is the front hand. I usually do the back hand if I uh, do it like this, but I want to use the front hand. So watch. Again, the snatch takes ages to learn, so don't get it confused if it doesn't work for the first time. But this important aspect, as it drops, don't pull your hips back. Wait for that contact, because the contact is telling your brain, is sending the action potential down your brain into the muscle. Bro, you gotta react, right, from zero. Your hips be like, oh, nothing going on, boom. Ooh, we gotta react, bros. So then they react, and boom you come back up. So this is the snatch. And I just want to make it clear right now, I'm giving you a brief overlook on these exercises. The snatch is so complicated, there's so many aspects to learn about it, but I'm just giving you the basics because I don't want to overwhelm you with information right now. So now the final exercise, we have talked about the single hand hard style swing, we've talked about the snatch, now let's cover the jerk. Now with the jerk, and as it relates to the professionals and champions, what they say is the jerk is most definitely the biggest contributor of power development. The snatch, even though we work accordingly, if you are getting better with your technique and you work more efficiently, you can use the snatch as your 
endurance, strength endurance, or even power endurance. But explosive power, explosiveness is directed, yes, in the hard style swing, but I believe even more in a jerk. So let me demonstrate what the jerk looks like. Now we have to understand when I clean the bell up, this is the hand insertion, I've talked about it. Your elbow connects with the hip. I have all of my, an my ankle, my knee, as well as my hip, they're extended, ready to, to add to the movement. Now what happens is I am dipping. So I am not pushing my hips back. You don't want to do this because now you lose contact with the elbow. You dip, pushing the nips fo uh, hips, uh, knees forward. Now I fully extend all my three joints. The ankle, the knee, as well as the hip. The kettlebell, thanks to the velocity and the energy that is coming from below, now transfers the energy into my elbow that is connected to the, to the hip. And boom, this helps to thrust the bell overhead. And as it lands overhead, this is the tricky part, I have to, listen closely, extend my sh el shoulder as well as my elbow joint and flex or bend my hip as well as my knee joint. Can you see this? This is the second dip. And then we finalize the exercise in the so-called top fixation where I extend all the joints in my lower, uh, in the, uh, of my lower body. And then I, boom. Re-rack the weight. How do I re-rack it? There's a little secret that I'm sharing with you right now. We call it shoulders touch. So as the bell comes down, I am reaching for the shoulder first, and this is a sign that I can now pull my elbow close to my body. Let's recap. Let's imagine we have two kettlebells, two imaginary kettlebells, and you can follow me right now. We have everything loaded. I have my hip, knee, ankle joint extended. I am dipping my knees now, follow me, boom. Let's stay in this position for a second. The dip loads your quads. Now the second phase is the bump or the propulsion phase where I, listen closely, extend the ankle, the knee, as well as the hip joint. This transfers energy into my elbows, which help to thrust the bell overhead, boom. So now the weight comes overhead, and as soon as I reach, or a millisecond before I reach full extension, I'm bending my knees, bending my hips, extending my shoulder, extending my elbow. And I finalize the exercise with a full extension of my leg, and as I come back down, I'm dropping the weight, shoulders touch, elbows come down. The reason why I think there's so much power development going on is once you use heavy weights, and for me heavy is double 24s, that's 48 kg on my rack, I have to be quick. I can't wait, because if I am going too slow, the weight is going to crush me. So I have to jump under the weight. And I highly recommend for you to check out Lu Xiaoyan's Instagram channel, because on his Instagram channel, you see when Lu Xiaoyan, he's a, a Olympic weightlifter and a champion, when he does the power snatch, how he goes up, and as he pulls the bar up, there is, because you watch it in super slow motion, and this is fascinating to watch, there is a moment where the weight, the bar with 160 kilos or whatever, whatever have you, is weightless and it looks so strange because the barbell stops in mid-air and he just goes under it. Fascinating to watch and how are you able to do this? By developing your power with a ballistic exercise. And now let's just seamlessly put these three exercises together in a little workout whenever you are ready. I'm just putting my uh, taking my pullover off because I'm sweating. Man, I love this stuff. I can talk about it for hours. As you have probably noticed, Angie always tells me that's the perfect job for you because you can't stop talking. <laughs> so now, go grab your kettlebell. You want to try this with me. We're not going to do a full workout. 
Uh, we just want to give you a glimpse into what I would consider would be a great workout to develop your power. So let's do the following. We do 10 hard style swings with the left side. Then we put the bell down, relax for a couple of seconds. Then we do 10 hard style swings with the right side, put the kettlebell down, relax for a second. Then I am doing a snatch. And with the snatch, we want to work for time because then you don't have to think. So that means I'm going to put the timer on one minute. And then we're going to do 30 seconds with the left side, 30 seconds with the right side. Once we have completed that minute, we put the kettlebell down, we park it, relax a little bit, and then we finalize the workout with one minute of jerks. That means 30 seconds with the left side, 30 seconds with the right side. Okay? You might want to grab a lighter kettlebell because if you're not warmed up, you don't want to hurt yourself. I just want to, just want to give you the feeling and the, the, the vibe of what it feels like if you engage in a workout that is geared towards uh, proper power development. So now, whenever you guys are ready, we're going to jump into the hard style swing with the left side first. Are you ready? We start in three, two, one. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Park the bell. Now relax, breathe in, breathe in through the nose, exhale through the mouth, shake it off, relax, and now get ready for the right side, 10 reps, in 3, 2, 1, let's go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine. Park the bell. Breathe in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Now, as you can see, the timer behind me is showing 90 seconds. As soon as the timer reaches one minute, we're going to start with the snatch. Take a breather, we have 15 more seconds to go. Now don't overdo it. Snatches are highly complicated and they burn you out quickly if you're not careful. We start in four, three, two, one. Let's go. Ten more seconds to go. Switch sides. Park the bell. Now breathe. Breathe into the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Move a little bit. I love this idea from Paul, where he says fast and loose. It's an idea that also Georg Hackenschmidt and Dr. Krajewski are propagating in the book, in, in Georg Hackenschmidt's book, where he says keep moving. Don't stop, don't sit around. Now, let's finalize this power development workout with a jerk. Now we have the same concept. We have 30 seconds with the left side, 30 seconds with the right side, and we have 20 more seconds to go. Keep breathing. When Gypsy's having fun, he always has fun. We have 10 more seconds to go, gentlemen and ladies, whenever you are ready. It's five. We start with the left side. Four, three, two. Let's go. Don't 
10 more seconds. Switch sides. Couple of seconds. Park the bell. Now walk around, breathe. Get a zip of water, hydrate yourselves. Whoo! Good one, boy. Nice. 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 Take a breather, you earned it. Nice one. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to move in the final phase before I will be sharing my, uh, the way on how you can continue this journey because now you just saw a glimpse of what the kettlebell is able to provide. And hey, if you are a hockey player, a rugby player, a football player, a soccer player, a, an athlete, or just in general somebody who wants to bring up their power and profit from the so-called kettlebell effect. This is the workout that I presented you with. You do the single heart style swing, you do the snatch, you do the jerk. Took us about four to five minutes or five, four minutes. You do a couple of rounds and you're set. Now before we jump into what you need to do in order to continue your journey, you know what you have to do. Strabo, my name is of no importance to you. Just know this, I sponsored today's video of Liebestag. In the back you see my friend Igor. We are both hunting for good kettlebell channels. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Liebestag YouTube channel. Or else, comrade, we can consider you to be a true student of the art of kettlebell training. So you heard the man like and subscribe and share it with your friends. So now let's jump back. Here's your next step if you want to continue building upon the kettlebell effect. And you are lucky, ladies and gentlemen, because I have something for you, a sale that you have to jump on right now if you're interested in continuing your journey. We have Columbus Day sale. It started on Monday and it goes through until this Sunday. So you have time until this Sunday to decide whether this kettlebell course bundle that I'm about to present to you is worth it. And let me tell you, it is is and we get massive amounts of feedback that people love that stuff if you just love what i showed you and what i was able to demonstrate then you will be totally blown away by this material that i have for you this course bundle is packed with simple popular and effective kettlebell workouts tutorials and thorough programming so you know exactly what to do how to do it increase confidence with your kettlebell and improve your power development. You'll essentially get one full year of a supply of kettlebell workouts and protocols and tutorials, full year stretch. Here's what this bundle does for you. You'll build muscle, you'll build power, you'll get in shape, you'll be able to engage in fat loss, get more confident, build muscle, discover the powerful sequence of kettlebell training because what I just showed you, the top fixation, the arm body connection, how you have to jump inside the window, the jerk, the, the triple extension. These are secrets. If they're not taught to you, nobody really knows how to do that stuff. And then you watch somebody do it and you'll be like, wow, why doesn't, why doesn't it look like, why can't, I, why can't I do it? Because you don't have confidence, because you don't have, to, you don't have the proper information. So you can get all of this without having to spend a fortune on coaches, a fortune on gym memberships, leave your home or piece together random information on YouTube. And I know many of you who are watching, you are subscribed to many channels. And let me tell you, all of, many of these channels, I'm subscribed as well. I like what they do, I love what they do, but I don't believe in variety content. I don't think you can talk about the kettlebell, then talk about the barbell, then talk about the dumbbell, then talk about yoga, then talk about Pilates, then talk about dancing, then talk about martial arts, talk about everything. So you are jack of all trades, but master of none. 
what I uh, want to specialize in and what I'm trying to become an expert in is the kettlebell. So what I'm giving you is proper distilled information pertaining to kettlebell training. So let's go through these courses that you're getting. Course number one is Fan Favorites. This is a compilation of 12 of our most viewed, most liked, and most popular kettlebell workouts on YouTube. You're going to do powerful workouts such as Pavel Simple and Sinister, the Power 5 Complex by Scott Yardella, Dan John's Armor Building Complex, and much more, all in the follow-along format. People love these workouts. We have them on YouTube. We have hundreds, hundreds of thousands of views on them, thousands of likes. People love that stuff, and you get it distilled in fan favorites in course number one. Course number two, what I just showed you in a very superficial manner was technique and tutorials, right, and form. The Hybrid Style Masterclass, which is course number two, is your complete package where you will learn 25 of the most bang for your buck kettlebell exercises. In explicit detail, I love to geek out on technique and form. I'm not just giving you superficial stuff. In that course, this takes about, uh, when I started, it took one of our clients to complete at least three or four months because there's so much information in it. Now, this, this is not supposed to overwhelm you because this is just reference points. For example, you try to snatch and you're like, hey, something's missing. You check the course, what's wrong? Ah, this is what I have to focus on. You go back to the basics, you wanna understand them, and I guarantee you, your kettlebell technique will go through the roof. Course number three quickly is developing into our most powerful kettlebell course and our most best-selling course. It's 90 gains of kettlebells. If you want to build lean, aesthetic, and practical muscle, if you want to in in increase your power, if you want to look better, if you want to perform better, this is your course. It takes you only 12 weeks and you'll essentially build muscle that looks good but that also performs good. What I did in this course is I took the laws of muscle building that Dr. Uh, Brad Schoenfeld, I read his book and I've been in this game for a little bit longer now. I took all this knowledge and combined it with the facets of kettlebell training and made a course out of it. So this is, to my knowledge, the only course where that is geared towards pra building practical and aesthetic muscle while abiding by the laws of muscle building and hypertrophy and abiding by the laws of kettlebells. Because kettlebells, as we have uh, learned now, can do many things. Course number four, this is Angie's first course. This is a ladder workout course. Now, what are ladders? If you have been watching our stuff for longer or you do our regular workouts, you see that I love working for time because then I don't have to think. I don't have to think. But another great type of training I love is ladder workouts. And ladder workouts, we call them mountains. So you start at the bottom and then you go to the top. So one possible scenario of a workout is 50 swings, 12 clean and presses, six snatches, two Turkish get-ups. So then you are at the top of the mountain, but then you have to go down, two Turkish get-ups, six snatches, 10 clean and presses, 50 swings. And this is a great way, it mixes up, it gives you some great most bang for your buck variety and is really awesome and powerful. Yes, it says ladies edition, because Angie delivered or um, is aiming this course for women, but guys, you're gonna love this as well because your body, the, the kettlebell doesn't matter, doesn't care whether you're male or female. It, the principles apply. The same principles and the same rules apply. Course number five, this has been our best selling course for over the years now. And this is the first course that I worked, not the first course, the second big course that I worked on. And it was really, a lot of people love it. It's 90 days of kettlebells. What is the difference here? Here's the focus if you wanna. Get, get in shape, lose fat, and use a tested and tried nutritional coaching system. This is where you build solid nutrition habits with solid workout habits. That's the only course where we have some nutrition coaching packed into it. So these are five courses. They all come equipped with thoughtful programming. Don't think for a second that I just mash some workouts together and then I call it a day and say, oh, you know what, that's a course, let's do it. No, there is programming because we have experience with people in real life and all these workouts, all these ideas, they have been tested with people in real life. That's why I'm speaking with so much confidence because I don't care what people say. I have experience and the knowledge from working with real people. It's not the same than just working online or just 
writing down spreadsheets for people who then just do the workout and they're good with it and you meet them once a month. If you work with people on a regular basis, you see all, you go into all the nooks and crannies of, of helping people develop proper technique, get in shape, lose weight, build muscle, then you get a lot of experience and that is in that course. So here's exactly what you're getting, five courses, over 40 kettlebell workouts, most popular and famous kettlebell workouts. You know what's good about these workouts? You're gonna love them. I can 99% guarantee that you're gonna love these, these workouts because thousands and thousands of people on YouTube already love them. You get nutrition coaching, a systematic approach to training, a workout schedule for two to three week, uh, workouts per week, in-depth tutorials about proper form and technique, a powerful ladder training system, and a workout and protocol supply for one year straight. 365, bro. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to go to the gym. No, nothing. You, I got you covered. Here's what you need for all this massive amount of content. One kettlebell. A little bit of discipline and dedication, of course. So this is the back end. This is what your system looks like. Once you've signed up, this is the dashboard where you can view all of your courses. And on the next slide, this is the e-learning platform. Because yes, they look like DVDs, right? They're not DVDs. You have instant access because everything's delivered to you online through our powerful e-learning platform. So in the middle, you have the video that you have to do. And on the left side, you have the chapters and the lessons. And here's something that I really want to, uh, an important point that I want to drive home. Do you see this blue, you should see it, yeah? This blue button down here that says complete and continue. Whenever you have finished a lesson, a workout, or a step, or whatever have you, please click complete and continue. This might sound trivial, but if you click complete and continue, this is a tick in your brain that builds a habit. It sets off endorphins. It's like, oof, I did it. Boom, hey, you did it. Boom, oh, I did it, nice one, yeah. I never, I was never able to do seven workouts in a row. And now I've been training for three weeks, seven workouts in a row, boom. Every time it's boom, 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 boom. Building habits. And that's a side note. The most powerful tip that I can give you, if there's nothing that you take away from this video or this stream, one thing that I can tell you is please, habits are the key to success. It's not motivation. Motivation goes out the door. It's all about building proper habits. Consistency. I love what my mentor Dan John says. Dan John says, he says, there's two secrets to success. Number one, you have to get started. Number two, if you have to keep going. Sorry for my stumbling and mumbling. <laughs> Number one, you have to get started. Number two, you have to keep going. And then he follows up with saying, most people don't keep going which in essence means most people don't build a habit. And that's what I'm here for, helping you develop a proper habit. Now, this is not everything. You get some bonuses, watch this. You'll have access to one of the biggest kettlebell learning experience that I've ever had in my life. In June 2019, I've had Steve Carter float, fly in from, from the States into Switzerland, into the gym. He certified AGME in both CKT certificates and I've taped the whole seminar and you can watch this three and a half hour seminar. It is in the course package, nowhere else. It's not on YouTube, not on Instagram, nowhere. It's only, it's paywalled because I paid a lot of money for this, but it was worth every cent. Don't get me wrong. Steve Carter was worth, he could have charged three times the price because what I got out of it, his, this was the pivotal moment when everything shifted. Before, I was just dabbling around with the kettlebell. And now I am giving you this pivotal moment that you want to use. Because now I'm giving you an important moment in your lifetime, in your journey of kettlebell training, where you are getting proper coaching, which will change your kettlebell journey, your confidence, your habits, your life, your fitness, your, your looks, your heart, your condition, your health. It will change it forever. I'm giving you the keys right now. And you will be able to watch this three and a half hour seminar where Steve was handing me the keys. If you sign up. And there's one more thing that you're getting. I'm not joking here now. Monthly live kettlebell group classes via Zoom. It happens currently every last Thursday of the month, 7 p.m. Central Eastern Standard Time. That's 10 a.m. LA time or 1 p.m. New York time. 
And this is what it looks like. You have me on the left and you have all of our folks joining for free. You're not paying a dime. You can join every month where I'm giving you live feedback and you're gonna work out with me. It's not just watching me do stuff and then you do stuff. It's watching me teach you and then you have to do it and I can give you proper feedback. The invite is per email only. Because once you sign up, the system will register and say, oh, John or, or Patricia sh signed up, boom. Now they get the automatic invite per email only. You're not able to get this invite anywhere else, only per email. Now here's the value. What people normally pay for what I'm offering right now is the following. Course number one, fan favorites, I charge 147 US dollars for this course. Course number two, Hybrid Style Masterclass, you pay 199 US dollars for this course. Course number three, 90 gains of kettlebells, you're paying 147 for this course. For the Never Rest Ladder Workouts, you pay 147. For 90 days of kettlebells, you pay 147 as well. Steve Carter's private seminar. If you would attend this in a group setting in person, they would probably charge you 700 US dollars. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go there. If you have the chance to get certified or to get to talk to a coach in real life, please do it. It's worth every cent. The second bonus, free monthly group classes. I charge 49 US dollars per session normally. If you show up in the gym in group sessions, that's 588 US dollars per year. You get bonus workouts, the Kendall Knights podcast, all ad free. That's a total value of 2,075 US dollars. I'm charging not that price because it's a sale but you have to act quickly. I'm not even charging 9.97, that's 50% off. I'm charging, drum roll, brrr, bang, 2.97, that's 85% off. I told you in the beginning, 85% off. You can also choose a payment plan, which a lot of people actually use. I was kind of amazed, I was like, wow, a lot of people use that payment plan for three months, where the system will charge you 109 US dollars each month for three months months. You get all that stuff. Almost all courses are charged for 147 except the Hybrid Style Masterclass, these five courses. Steve caught a seminar, monthly group coaching, bonus workouts and the Kettle Nights podcast, over $2,000 worth. You get it for $297, 85% off. Or you can choose the payment plan. How can you access it? Link in description or link in the chat. If you are still watching the stream, Either click the link in the description, the first one, or click the link that's in the chat. Just scroll up, it, you should see it pinned. It's the pinned comment right on top. Click it and it takes you to the site where you can sign up. But listen, this offer is gone on Sunday. I am not joking, Sunday midnight. It is gone off the table, adieu. And then you have to either buy the course separately because we don't change these prices in the courses or you have to wait for another sale, which a lot of people do. They're like, okay, I'm waiting for another sale. But you know what? If you wait these 30 or 40 days when we release the next sale or whatever have you, you are missing out. You would have been way further in your journey if you would have started right now. It's just like the typical January, right? New, New Year's resolutions, which are coming up. Yeah, I'm starting right now, but I can start tomorrow as well. And then boom, it's June and you didn't do anything. It's just plain reality. I'm not down talking to you because I love you guys, but it's just the plain truth. Now, one thing that I want to make sure is that you get this guarantee. And some people have used this guarantee already and I never make a hassle out of it because I call it the no gain, no pay guarantee. If you pay, I want you to gain. Insights, muscle, new understanding. Of course, I want you to uh, lose fat but I want you to gain understanding on how to lose fat. I want you to gain experience. I want you to gain confidence. I want you to gain joy with kettlebells. And I can prove it to you that you will if you engage in the system. How can I prove it? By offering you a guarantee that says, if you don't like it, you don't pay. You, ch you test the system for 30 days straight and you're like, Gregor, you know what? I don't like it, money back and keep the course as a parting gift. I'm not joking. I do believe in this material. Why? Because it is a solidified coaching concept that I can guarantee with my name. My name stands behind my product. If it doesn't work, if you're, we had one client who says he's not in the headspace right now, another client says, hey, software is not clicking for me. 
you get the money back. Why? I only want to keep your money if you're happy. If you're not happy, I'm not happy, I don't want your money. And I'd rather give you the money back, still have you as a happy customer, so to speak, and then you walk around saying, hey, you know what? These labor stock guys, they're cool. I bought something, but I wasn't in my headspace right now, so I got the money back. But you know what? I like them. And maybe, maybe one day you come back. Because I believe in giving people value. And if they don't see the value, which it's real, but it happens, then you don't have to pay. So enroll now. Click the link right now. Do it! And you'll get it. I hope I was able to serve you some value, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. Value worth of 2,000 US dollars. You're getting it now for, not 97, for bada bing, bada bam, 297, 85% off. And you'll be like, ooh, Gregory's a good salesman. Of course I have to be a salesman. First of all, I have to run a business. I have to pay my bills. I have to take care of my family. But I'm also incredibly confident in what we offer. So now, ladies and gentlemen, do we have some questions? We still have uh, 42 people in the chat, which is awesome. And let me just see. First of all, I want to thank you for being a part. And let me just take a sip of water. Hey, and if you like these, these are awesome, right? We call them kettle mugs. I love these mugs. You should also see a link in the description. <laughs> I'm telling you everything. <laughs> Matter of fact, don't forget to do this. Strava. My name is of no importance to you. Just know this. I sponsored today's video of Libestank. In the back, you see my friend Igor. We are both hunting for good kettlebell channels. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Libestark YouTube channel. Or else, comrade, we can't consider you to be a true student of the art of kettlebell training. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. So now let's check if we have some questions in the chat and then I'm gonna wrap this thing up. So thank you so much for joining. It was a pleasure. And let's see, I... Ah, oh, Greg, you always look good when you're all sweaty. <laughs> oh, Marlene. Marlene going all in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's see. Oh, actually, there's not a lot of stuff in the chat, which is totally fine because it's not a Q&A. But let's see. Maybe we have something. So, Marlene, send you a lot of love. <laughs> the Space Marine. It's mostly, uh, I think it's mostly marketing slogan, but yeah, okay. You think about the kettlebell effect? No, it's not, man. Michael Saikali, great looking gym. Oh, I love, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michael. I love the gym. I really love it, the way we set it up. And you know what's funny? It took me... Um, it took me a lot of time to actually build it the way it is because I've had a basic understanding of what my gym is supposed to look like, but then so many things changed. And we jumped on the kettlebell in the pandemic in 2019 when I got certified. And then I realized, you know what? I don't need all the other equipment. Back uh, one and a half years ago, it looked different. I had machines in there and stuff, but then I sold almost everything. And now kettlebells are front and central because I believe there's the most valuable thing that you can engage in. Uh, Houston, Texas, I love the kettlebell swing. Me too, man. Daniel, this active to inactive state transition sounds perfect for combat sports athletes, 100%, man. And like I said, it's my theory, and I'm so looking forward to talking to Dr. Michael Yeses, and I'm gonna present him this theory and say, listen, Dr. Michael Yeses, if you have the time, please watch it, and then let me know if I'm on the right track. And that's why you see a lot of martial arts, uh, martial, arts uh, martial arts guys work with kettlebells because the power development and the way you're able to train with a kettlebell, it serves you value that probably other training modalities do not really serve you or at least not to that extent that the kettlebell does. Rick Roberts saw this first on the Bioneer. Great content that he does. I asked the Bioneer, man. Hey, if anybody, you, any, any one of you is subscribed to the Bioneer, please flood his comment section. I, I, I sent him an email. I said, bro, we have a similar audience. You have to appear on our Kettle Nights podcast. But he didn't answer. And I think that email, how long is that ago? I think that's, that's, that's at, least, at least three or four months ago. I sent him an email. I said, you know what? You got to talk to me, bro. 
but I understand. He has over 600k subscribers. I only have, we only have 50k, close to 50k. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you. But sometimes I do understand that maybe bigger channels, they're like, you know what? Uh, I'm not co collaborating with smaller channels. I don't want to say that the Bioneer doesn't do it. Or maybe he just didn't see it. Maybe the email landed in spam. So please, let him know. I want to talk to him on the podcast. Rick. Fit. Yes, please. Please, man, please. Jerk and Snatch are the Tsar of the kettlebell, according to me. Rick, 100%. 100%. Anthony, I'm at work. I'm doing the 90 days of kettlebells and I'm seeing results, getting better at moving through the workouts without stopping and my weight is going down. Anthony, thank you so much for the love and thank you for that awesome feedback. Please let us know in the Facebook group. We also have a Facebook group. If you sign up right now, you'll get access to a Facebook group and please share it in there. People always love to hear good stories and this is powerful. I'm really, really happy for you, Anthony. Marlene, it's us old ladies. You gotta watch out for... <laughs> 100% Marlene. Thank you. Eric, I can speak to kettlebell ballistics, increasing punching, punching and kicking power. And you know what? Hey, now that you're saying this, uh, Eric, I worked with a client. His goal was to pre prepare for a certificate. And he had to do a fitness test where he had to do some punching. He was doing a certificate in the security department, in security business. So he was working with me. Then he went and he was, all, he was working with me and he was working with his instructor on working on punching power because he had to do some bag work with, with, the, with the baton and also with, I think, with, with just regular punches, paraphrasing a little bit. And he said, after two months of kettlebell training, he went back and the instructor was like, boom, whoa, what happens? It increased punching and kicking power. Yeah. I can't explain why or how, but there's a significant correlation. Can anyone explain exactly why that happens? Eric, watch the video from the start and you will understand and see why this happens. I've ha I have a theory which I have shared extensively in this video. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. We still have 34 people in the chat. Gypsy is ready to go home. I'm ready to go home as well. So thank you so much for the love. Don't forget. Columbus Day of Sale, the correspondent. You got to get it. It's right up there in the, in the, yeah, in the uh, chat. So use it right now. Thank you so much for joining. And don't forget, please, like this video, share it with your friend, and consider subscribing. It helps out the YouTube channel. I'll catch you on the next one. I'm sending you a lot of love. Peace. Out. If you're looking for kettlebell courses that can help you lose weight, build muscle, and improve your kettlebell technique, then check out the Laborstock Academy. Let us help you discover a new perspective on kettlebell training, making it simple and easy for you to understand. Join the waiting list of your desired course now and secure your spot when it's open for enrollment. Link is in the description.